Hi friends, welcome back to our series of sessions on energy conservation and management. Today we shall be discussing on the performance evaluation of steam boilers. As we all know, the performance parameters of boiler like efficiency and evaporation ratio reduces with time due to poor combustion, heat transfer surface fouling and poor operation apart from maintenance. Even for a new boiler, reasons such as deteriorating fuel quality, water quality, etc., can result in poor boiler performance. Boiler efficiency tests help us to find out the deviation of boiler efficiency from the best efficiency and target problem area for corrective action. Thermal efficiency of boiler is defined as the percentage of heat input that is effectively utilized to generate steam. There are two methods of assessing boiler efficiency. The direct method, where the energy gain of the working fluid, whether it is water or steam, is compared with the energy content of the boiler fuel. The second one is the indirect method, where the efficiency is the difference between the losses and the energy input. Direct method has the advantage in terms of plant people can evaluate quickly. It requires few parameters for computation and needs few instruments for monitoring. Whereas the disadvantage of the direct method is, it does not give clues to the operator as to why efficiency of the system is lower. And it also does not calculate various losses accountable for various efficiency levels. So if we see the boiler efficiency, it's a simply it is given as heat output by heat input into 100. Parameters to be monitored for the calculation of boiler efficiency by this direct method are quantity of steam generated per hour in kg per hour, quantity of fuel used per hour in kg per hour, and working pressure in kg force per square centimeters gauge pressure and superheat temperature if any. The temperature of feed water, type of fuel, and gross calorific value of the fuel, which is measured in kilocalories per kg of fuel. So in this method, boiler efficiency is Qx Hg minus Hf into 100 by Q into GCV. If you see, Hg is the enthalpy of saturated steam in kilocalories per kg of steam, whereas Hf is enthalpy of feed water. Here you will get that. So this is almost like MCP delta T, uh, where we will see the, the total enthalpy in the steam minus the total enthalpy in the feed water, right? And then uh, GCV, what is the gross calorific value of the fuel? So the number of, uh, the amount of fuel multiplied by the gross calorific value of the fuel. So similarly, mass of steam are thing multiplied by the, so that is exactly uh, what we uh, get. So if you see the example uh, problem, typically, if you want to find out the efficiency of boiler by direct method, you now the basic data is basically the type of boiler is coal fired, quantity of steam, which is dry, is 7 tons per hour, steam pressure is 10 kg force per square centimeters at 180 degrees centigrade, quantity of coal consumed is 1.8 tons per hour, feed water temperature is at 85 degrees centigrade, gross calorific value of coal is 3200 kilocalories per kg. Enthalpy of steam at 10 kg force per square centimeter is 665 kilocalorie per kg. This is a saturated steam enthalpy. And enthalpy of feed water is 85 kilocalories per kg. So if you see, we have 8 tons per hour of steam generated multiplied by 665 minus 85. So this is the enthalpy of uh, steam multiplied by enthalpy of feed water. So into 1000, because we are talking about the uh, both we are taking kilocalories per kg. So then if we in input is 1.8 tons per hour of steam is there. And then 3,200 is the gross calorific value of the fuel. So 1.8 into 3,200. Because we are using in thin, so 1,000 by 1,000 it is immaterial. So into 100 we get 80%. That will be the boiler efficiency uh, of it. So it should be noted that boiler may not generate 100% saturated dry steam and there may be some amount of wetness uh, in the steam. That, that is the point for conservation. Then if you see the indirect method, there are 
reference standards of boiler testing at site using indirect method, namely British standards, BS 845 in 1987, and USA standard is ASME PTC 4.1, power test code steam generating units. Indirect method is also called as the heat loss method. The efficiency can be arrived at by subtracting the heat loss fractions from 100. The standards do not include blowdown loss in the efficiency determination process. A detailed procedure for calculating the boiler efficiency by indirect method, let us discuss now. However, it may be noted that the practicing energy managers in industry prefer simpler calculation procedures. So the principal losses that occur in a boiler are normally loss of heat due to dry flue gases, loss of heat due to moisture in fuel and combustion air, loss of heat due to combustion of hydrogen, loss of heat due to radiation, and loss of heat due to unburnt fuel. In the above, loss due to moisture in fuel and loss due to combustion of hydrogen are dependent on the fuel and cannot be controlled by design. The data required for calculation of boiler efficiency using indirect method are ultimate analysis of fuel where hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and carbon moisture content and ash, cont ash content is determined. And the percentage of oxygen or carbon dioxide in the flue gases needs to be measured. Then flue gas temperature needs to be measured. And then ambient temperature in degrees centigrade and humidity of air in kg per kg of dry air. Gross calorific value in kilocalories per kg and percentage combustible in ash in case of solid fuels and the gross calorific value of ash in kilocalorie per kg in case of solid fuel. So this is the actual uh, data required. So once we have the data, let's see the formulations. First, we need to calculate the, the theoretical air requirement, which is nothing but the formula given is 11.6 into carbon plus 34.8 into hydrogen minus oxygen by 8 plus 4.35 into sulfur divided by 100 kg per kg of fuel. So this is exactly what then the excess air supplied will be percentage of O2 by 21 minus percentage of O2 into 100. This is the excess air supply. So actual mass of air supplied per kg of fuel is given by 1 plus excess air by 100 into theoretical air. This is exactly actual mass of air to be uh, supplied. Then if you see the percentage of heat loss due to dry flue gases is given by MCP delta T again, mass multiplied by the specific heat multiplied by the total enthalpy of fuel multiplied by total enthalpy of air divided by gross calorific value of fuel into 100, where M is the mass of dry flue gases in kg per kg, M is the combustion products from fuel, CO2 plus SO2 plus nitrogen in fuel plus nitrogen in the equal mass of air supplied plus oxygen in flue gas. HTO by water vapor in the flue gas should be considered, should not be considered here. Then CP is the specific heat of flue gas, which is now given by 0.23 kilocalories per kg degree of centigrade. Then if you see the percentage of heat loss due to evaporation of water formed due to hydrogen in the fuel is 9 into H2 hydrogen multiplied by 584 plus Cp specific heat into enthalpy of fuel minus enthalpy of air divided by gross calorific value of fuel into 100. Then we have air, H2 is the kg of H2 in 1 kg of fuel and then C is the specific heat of saturated steam is 0.45 kilocalorie per kg degree of centigrade. And percentage heat loss due to evaporation of moisture in fuel is given by M into 584 plus Cp into Tf minus G. If you see, M is the percent, this is based on the moisture present in the fuel. Then percentage of heat loss due to moisture present in the air is the actual air, uh, excess air, then humidity factor, into Cp into Tf minus Tv by gross calorific value of fuel into 100. Here again, Cp specific heat of fuel. Percentage of heat loss due to unburnt in fly ash is equal to total ash collected by kg of fuel into gross calorific value of fly ash divided by gross calorific value of fuel into 100. Then we have the percentage of heat loss due to unburnt in bottom ash, that is total ash collected by kg of fuel burnt into GCV of bottom ash by GCV gross calorific value of the fuel. Then finally, we have the percentage heat loss 
due to radiation and other unaccounted loss. The actual radiation and convection losses are difficult to assess because of particular emissivity of various surfaces, its inclination, airflow pattern, etc. In a relatively smaller boiler with a capacity of 10 megawatt, the radiation and unaccounted losses could amount to between 1% and 2% of the gross calorific value of the fuel. While in a 500 megawatt boiler, values between 0.2% to 1% are typical. The loss may be assumed appropriately depending on the surface condition. Then finally, if you see the efficiency of the boiler is equal to 100 minus of first item, second item, all the items put together, and we get the efficiency of the boiler. If you see the example with the data, the following are the data uh, of a typical oil-fired boiler. Let us find out the efficiency of boiler by unburned indirect method, and the boiler evaporation ratio also can be found out. So the type of boiler is oil-fired. Then ultimate analysis gives carbon 84%, Sulfur 3%, hydrogen 12%, oxygen 1%. Gross calorific value of oil is 10,200 kilocalories per kg. Steam generation per pressure is 7 kg force per square centimeter. Enthalpy of steam is 660 kilocalories. Feed water temperature is 60 degrees centigrade. Percentage of oxygen in flue gas is 7. Percentage of carbon dioxide in flue gas is 11%. Then flue gas temperature is 220 degrees centigrade. Ambient temperature is 27 degrees centigrade and humidity of air is 0 0.018 kg per kg dry of flue gas. So with this data, a typical data for the efficiency calculation of a boiler, let us find out the step by step solution. The first one is to find the theoretical air requirement. As we have seen from the formula 11.6 into C, that's the formula given. And then we are substituting the carbon percentage of 84, hydrogen percentage of 12, and then um, sulfur percentage of 3 in the fuel. We get 14 kg of air per kg of oil. This is the theoretical air requirement. Then step 2 is to find the excess air supplied. So excess air supplied formula is oxygen into 100 divided by 21 minus O2. Here 7 into 100, 21 minus O2 is given in the data is 7. So we are getting 50% of excess air supplied. Now, if you want to find the actual mass of air supplied is equal to 1 plus excess air by 100 into theoretical air. So that is 1 plus 50 by 100. 50 is the excess air that we are getting into 14. So 1.5 into 14 is equal to 21% kg of air per kg of coal. That is the air requirement that is calculated. Actual amount of air that is to be supplied to the burner. Then we have estimation of all other losses. The first one is dry flue gas loss. So percentage of heat loss due to dry flue gas formula we have seen MCP into enthalpy of steam, enthalpy of fuel minus enthalpy of air divided by gross calorific value of the fuel into 100. So M is the mass of carbon dioxide plus sulfur dioxide plus nitrogen plus oxygen. All these are put together. Then percentage of dry flue gas is M into 0.84 that we are uh, uh, getting, right? And 21 plus 1 uh, is 22, uh, uh, which we got. Then percentage dry flue gases is 22 into 0 0.23 into 22, min 220 minus 27. This is the enthalpy uh, that we got. 0.23 is the specific heat of the uh, flue gas. 22 is the mass, total mass supplied, divided by gross calorific value 10,200 into 109.57% is the dry flue gas loss. Then we got the heat loss due to evaporation of water formed due to hydrogen in fuel. That is 9 into H2 is the formula that we have seen already. And if we substitute the data here, we are getting 9 into uh, hydrogen is 12, 584 plus specific heat is 0.45 is the specific heat of steam, 0.45 kilocalories per kg. Enthalpy of fuel, T220 minus 27 is this. And then gross calorific value is 10,200. So what we get is 7.1% is the heat loss due to evaporation of water formed due to hydrogen in fuel. Then if you see heat loss due to moisture present in air is equal to 
um, actual amount of air supplied into humidity, into a specific heat, into TF minus TA to 100 by gross calorific value of fuel. So if you substitute the values, 21 into 0 0.018 is the humidity, a kg of dry air, and 0.45 is the specific heat, 220 minus 27 is the enthalpy divided by 10,200. What we get is 0.322% of heat loss due to moisture present in the air. Then heat loss due to radiation and unaccounted un losses is for a small boiler, it is estimated to be around 2%. So the boiler efficiency is equal to heat loss due to dry flue gas is 9.14%. Heat loss due to evaporation of water formed due to hydrogen fuel is 7.1%. And heat loss due to moisture present here is 0.322%. And heat loss due to radiation and other unaccounted losses is 2%. So boiler efficiency is equal to 100 minus 9.14 plus 7.10 plus 0 0.322 plus 2, which is given by 100 minus 18.56. It is 81%. Approximately, it is rounded off. Then we have, we can also calculate the boiler evaporation ratio. Evaporation ratio means kilogram of steam generated per kilogram of fuel consumed. So typical examples are for coal-fired boiler, we have six, and for oil-fired boiler, we have 13. That is the boiler evaporation ratio. So that means one kg of coal can generate six kg of steam, whereas one kg of oil can generate 13 grams of steam. However, this figure will depend upon the boiler, calorific value of fuel, and associated boiler efficiency. So this is exactly about the boiler evaporation ratio. So in our case, we got the boiler evaporation ratio of 13.77. That is the typical um, uh, value. And this is how we have to calculate the boiler evaporation ratio. So boiler efficiency and boiler evaporation ratio are two very important boiler performance evaluation parameters. So hope you have um, uh, enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching us.